If you've spent any time around our Hebrew roots friends, you've heard the argument we're going to look at today. 1 John 2.6 says this about Jesus, Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. And of course, the theology of Torahism instantly interprets this to mean that since Jesus kept the Torah, we should keep the Torah too. And you can see the internal logic in that conclusion. However, it's incorrect. It's not what John is teaching in this passage. But don't take my word for it. We're going to dig into Scripture today and see what it says. And then I'm going to give you two very clear reasons why our Hebrew roots friends are wrong on this verse. But first, for those of you who are new to this channel, let me define what I mean when I say Torahism, because I don't want to be misunderstood. The Torah is beautiful and it's holy and it was given by God. Torahism, on the other hand, is a false theology that teaches that followers of Jesus are required to keep the law of Moses. That, that keeping things like the Sabbath and the kosher food laws and the feasts and circumcision are mandatory for Christians. And further, that not doing those things is walking in sin and disobedience. So, to be clear, if someone's teaching that those things are optional for Christians, that it's a matter of personal choice whether to keep those things, they're not teaching Torahism. Scripture teaches that keeping those things for Christians under the New Covenant is permitted, but it's not required. So it's when our Torah-keeping friends insist that those things are a requirement of followers of Jesus, that they cross the line into teaching unbiblical and dangerous things. That is a false teaching that can draw people away from Christ. And the argument we're going to look at today is a perfect example of what I mean. So let's get into it. 1 John 2.6 says, Whoever says he abides in him, in Jesus, ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Now, the author's obviously not referring to Yeshua's physical gait, the way in which he put one foot in front of the other, right? John is teaching that we Christians should live as Jesus lived. He's our example, our model. So what exactly does that mean? Well, as I mentioned, for those who subscribe to the theology of Torahism, the answer is that Jesus kept the Torah, so we need to keep the Torah. But as we've seen many times on this channel, our Hebrew roots friends tend to see the Torah behind every shrub and bush and read it into verses where it's not actually spoken of, which is why context is so important. What did John mean when he wrote that we should walk as Jesus walked? Well, how did Jesus live out his life? Okay, let's think about this for a minute. What do we know about how Jesus lived out his life during his earthly ministry? Well, first of all, let's acknowledge that our Torah-keeping friends are entirely correct that Jesus was a Jewish man who kept the law of Moses, and he kept it perfectly. He went to temple, he kept the Saturday Shabbat, he kept a kosher diet, observed the feasts, and, and all the rest. So what else do we know about him? Well, Jesus taught people about God, and he ministered to them, and he called them to repentance. Uh, he healed people, he cast out demons, he walked on water and, and, and performed other miracles. Uh, he primarily preached to the Jewish people, saying that he came only for the lost sheep of Israel, and he commanded his disciples to go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans. Um, he was also a tradesman who worked with his hands. He taught in synagogues regularly. He stood up to the, to the corrupt religious leadership. Uh, he drank wine. Uh, he sat with sinners, but he never sinned with them. He prophesied about what God would do in the future. He spent a lot of time praying to God. And of course, he was an itinerant preacher who walked from town to town, often slept outdoors, and he didn't own any land. So as Christians today who want to walk as Jesus walked, which of these things are we called to emulate? I think we can all agree that Christ followers aren't called to emulate all of these things, right? We aren't required to teach in synagogues or drink wine or avoid owning land or avoid preaching the gospel to Gentiles. Even though these things were a part of the way Jesus lived his life, they aren't requirements of all his followers. So the question becomes, well, where do we draw the line? Which aspects of Yeshua's walk are we called to emulate? What's the point that John's making here by saying that we should walk as he walked? Let's look at what Scripture says. 
Okay, we're going to start by reading the verse in context. So remember that when John wrote this letter, it didn't include chapters and verse numbers. Those were added much later by translators. So let's start at the passage that leads up to this verse, which for us would be at the end of chapter 1, where John is talking about walking in the light. So let's start at chapter 1, verse 5, and work our way up to the verse we're talking about today. This is the message we have heard from him, from Jesus, and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin." So John's using the analogy of light and darkness to teach about righteousness and sin. And he says, God is light. So God is perfect righteousness. And if we say we have fellowship with God, but our lives are full of sinful behavior, we're liars. Our sins are keeping us in the dark. Actually, as we'll see in the next few verses, John's painting a picture of people who try to keep their sins hidden in the dark by not admitting they exist and not confessing them. On the other hand, John says, if we walk in the light, in the righteousness of God, not trying to hide our sins, but rather confessing them when they occur, bringing them into the light, so to speak, we will be blessed. He says we'll have fellowship with one another, and Jesus will cleanse us from all sin. And then he repeats this idea of trying to hide or deny our sins. Verse 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So he's really laboring the point here that we need to confess our sins, not deny them and not keep them hidden in the dark. And he repeats the amazing news that if we confess our sins, we will be cleansed from all unrighteousness. And in our Bibles, then, this closes chapter 1. But, but John's point doesn't stop there. He, he keeps the idea moving forward, and he continues by telling us why he's writing this stuff about walking in the light and, and confessing sin. Chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation, the, the appeasement, the mercy for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So the idea John's building here is that if we walk in the light the way Jesus walked in the light, we'll have fellowship with each other and we'll be made right with God to the point that even when we do sin, we'll find forgiveness through the blood of Jesus. So fellowship and forgiveness are available to those who know Jesus and have put their faith in him. And then we get to the passage we want to look at today. And here John seems to anticipate a question on the part of his readers. In verses 3 through 6 are, are his answer to readers who are thinking, wow, that sounds great, but how do I actually know if I know Jesus in a saving way? And John starts answering that question in verse 3. This is how we know that we know him, if we keep his commands. And that's the theme of this passage that runs from, from verses 3 to 6. That, that's John's thesis. So after stating that thesis in, in verse 3, he immediately expounds on it. Verse 4, Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. So in verse 4, John says, Whoever says, I know him, but doesn't keep his commandments, is a liar. And then, and then for good measure, he makes the statement from the opposite direction in verse 5. If you do keep Yeshua's commands, it shows that you know him. There, there's a lot of repetition in this letter, which is, which is the ancient Hebrew way of really stressing a point by repeating it. And that's exactly what John does next. He restates his main point. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. John clearly doesn't want us to miss this point. He essentially repeats the same thing four times, once in each verse. Check it out. Verse 3 says, If we know him, we will keep his commandments. Verse 4, same thing stated in the negative. If we don't know him, we will not keep his commandments. Verse 5, If we know we are in him, we'll keep his word. Verse 6, If we abide in him, we will walk as he walked. <laughs> 
So John's equating the idea of keeping Yeshua's commands with walking the way he walked. He's not saying that's how we're saved, but that our obedience to Jesus reveals the sincerity of our faith in him. The one who truly knows Jesus is in him and will want to obey what he commanded. And conversely, someone who claims to be a Christian, but whose behavior is consistently opposed to the teachings of Jesus, isn't walking in the light. The truth is not in him. So when John says we are to walk as Jesus walked, he's continuing the idea he introduced at the end of chapter 1, where he said, if we walk in the light as Jesus himself walks in the light. And how do we know if we're walking in the light like Jesus did? Well, if we keep his commands. And this is where that tendency to see the law of Moses behind every shrub and bush leads our Torah-keeping friends astray. Here in 1 John chapter 2, John says that by keeping Yeshua's commandments, we're demonstrating evidence of a true faith. But John doesn't expound on what commandments he's talking about. It sure would have been nice if he would have explained what he meant by his commandments here. If he would have said, and this is his commandment, and then went on to explain exactly what he was talking about. But he doesn't do that here. So our Torah-keeping friends naturally interpret the phrase, his commandments, to be referring to the Mosaic commands, like Sabbath and kosher food and feasts and so on. And there are actually two pretty big problems with that interpretation. One's a general observation, and the other is a very specific, well, I don't want to say proof, but it's a very specific passage that speaks directly to the commandments John has in mind. The problem with interpreting the verse, keep his commandments, as specifically referring to the Sabbath and the food laws and the feasts and so on, is that those things are not commanded of Christians anywhere in the New Testament. Jesus nowhere requires those things of his followers, nor do the apostles or the New Testament authors. Those specific things aren't commanded of followers of Jesus in the New Testament anywhere, not by God or the Holy Spirit or Jesus himself. And consider this. In the book of 1 John, the Sabbath isn't mentioned anywhere. The book's five chapters long and it's never brought up, nor are the feasts, or the kosher food laws, or circumcision. And neither Moses nor the Mosaic law are mentioned in this book. So there's no supporting evidence in the entire book of 1 John that suggests that in chapter 2, the commands that John had in mind were those Mosaic commands. So think about the Hebrew root's position on this verse. The commandments they claim John is talking about in chapter 2 aren't specifically mentioned in the text of the passage, and they're not discussed anywhere in the book of 1 John, and they're not commanded of us anywhere in the New Testament. Yet we're supposed to believe they were intended in the subtext of the phrase, His commandments. That's a pretty big leap. At best, it's a tenuous and unsubstantiated, unsubstantiated interpretation. But the specific problem is even more damaging to the Hebrew roots interpretation. As I was researching 1 John 2, 6, I read through the entire book of 1 John to get my bearings and understand this verse in its larger context. And I noticed something interesting. As I mentioned, John repeats himself a lot in this book, and the idea of keeping his commandments is a major theme. John writes, and by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God, and God in him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. So keeping his commandments is a primary theme for John throughout this book. But don't you wish he would have told us specifically what he meant by his commandments? Is it the Mosaic commands? Is it specifically the commands that Jesus gave in Scripture? I mean, if we knew what John intended by that phrase, it sure would help to clear things up quite a bit, wouldn't it? Well, guess what? John does tell us specifically what he means. Chapter 3, verse 23 says, And this is his commandment. Now, before we look at that verse, let me ask you a question. Do you think he's going to say that this is his commandment, that you keep the law, or that you keep Sabbath and eat kosher? Well, if it did, we'd have to join our Torah-keeping friends in their observance of these things. 
but it doesn't say that at all. Let's pick up from the verse before and read through this passage in chapter 3, starting at verse 22. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit whom he has given us. Wow. John couldn't have said it more directly. What is his commandment? And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. That's what Jesus commanded us, right? The commandments the Apostle John's talking about are that we believe in Jesus and that we love one another. This echoes what Jesus taught as the two greatest commandments, love God and love people. So walking like Jesus walked, walking in the light is loving God and loving people. Jesus was our model for that. Again, there are no commandments in the New Testament for followers of Jesus that require us to keep Sabbath or eat kosher or keep the feasts or be circumcised. However, there are many repeated commands to love God and love one another. That's what it's all about, which really makes Torah keeping under the new covenant scary. I mean, why in the world would we put that extra yoke on the neck of believers of having to keep those Mosaic commands when it's not something that God requires? We're called to love God and love people. And shame on anyone who teaches that Torah keeping is a requirement for doing so. Okay, so let's look at the facts we've uncovered here. Number one, the Sabbath and kosher food laws and feasts and circumcision are not commanded of Christians anywhere in the New Testament. And if you think those are commanded somewhere, please post that passage in the, in the comments below so we can all discuss it. Number two, those things aren't even mentioned anywhere in the book of 1 John. Number three, on top of those two facts, John tells us directly what he means by his commandments. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. So our Torah-keeping friends want to interpret that statement that we should walk as Jesus walked as referring to keeping the law of Moses. But there's really no way we can come away from this passage thinking that we're supposed to keep the Torah commands, right? The only way we could conclude that is if we read the Mosaic commands into the passage for ourselves because that idea isn't found in the text. In 1 John 2, the, the apostles teaching us that obeying God's commandments shows that we're walking in the light. Psalm 119 says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. So to walk in the light, John says, is to keep his commandments, which under the new covenant means loving God and loving people. Thanks for watching. Shalom.